relax and close your eyes. Actually, don't do that. You might fall asleep and end up dreaming. Speaking of dreaming, do any of you guys actually remember what your dream was last night? When I asked myself this question, I began to wonder about the infinite world of dreams. In my AP Psychology class, we thoroughly studied this topic and I also took it upon myself to do extensive research, so I now feel confident in my abilities to teach you guys about it today. According to Dr. William Ravel in his sleep survey, one third of our lives are spent sleeping, and of that, one fourth is spent dreaming. Since dreams take up such a large portion of our lives, it is only logical that we should know more about them. Like me, I'm sure many of you guys have experienced a dream that have left you feeling scared, excited, or even just plain confused. In this speech, I will explain the intricate and complex world that is dreaming and why it is so crucial to our lives. More specifically, I will discuss the history of dreaming, the process and psychological reasons behind it, as well as some different ways we can understand and interpret our own dreams. In order to discuss the history of dreaming, it is first important to understand what dreams are. Dreams have been discussed since ancient times as, part of, as it is part of all human existence. Based off an article written by the American Sleep Association, dreams are defined as a succession of sensations, emotions, ideas, and images that occur involuntarily in a person's mind during certain stages of sleep. The first documented dream interpretations date back around four, to around 4000 BC, where people saw them as extensions of reality. According to dreammoods.org, the Greeks and Romans viewed dreams as direct messages from their gods and deities, whereas the Chinese believed that dreaming was a time where their soul left their body to visit other worlds. Though these ideas differ, one idea remains the same, that we as humans have always had an inclination to understand our dreams. Psychoanalytic psychologist Alfred Aller was one such psychologist dedicated to researching and analyzing dreams. He regarded dreams to be the pathway to one's true thoughts and emotions theorizing that dreams shed light to the problems in our life. Adler considered dreams to be a source of compensation for our shortcomings, a means to solve our problems. He believed that by bringing light to the hidden meanings of our dreams, we could relieve our psychological distress. So now that you know a little about dream research, I'm going to discuss the process of dreaming and the reasons behind it. So why do we dream? Dreaming can be best understood by evaluating REM sleep the final stage in the sleep cycle where dreaming occurs. In a Cleveland Clinic article, they state that this stage of sleep consists of accelerated respiration, increased brain activity, eye movement, and muscle relaxation. REM sleep starts about 90 minutes after you fall asleep and lasts for about 10 minutes. Throughout the night, REM stages reoccur and they grow in length. And overall, your body spends a total of about two hours a night dreaming. But researchers don't entirely agree on the psychological reasons behind dreaming, though there are some commonly held beliefs and theories. Healthline.com presents several hypotheses regarding the purposes of dreaming. For instance, many believe that dreaming acts as a sort of therapist, helping your brain make connections about your feelings it would otherwise not be able to consciously make. But one of the largest concepts regarding dreaming is that it deals with the acquisition of memories. Research shows that dreaming helps your brain effectively store information while also blocking stimuli that interfere with your memory and learning. But since dreams are so influential, it makes sense that we should try to understand them more. So how can we better interpret our dreams? According to Sigmund Freud and his psychoanalytic theory, dreams have two types of content, manifest and latent. The manifest content is a literal storyline behind the dream whereas the latent content is the deeper symbolic meaning. For example, say you dreamt that you showed up to an interview in only your underwear. This storyline is the manifest. But Freud might interpret this as you having feelings of insecurity or even fears of failure and humiliation. This is the latent content. In fact, there are many common and reoccurring dreams that researchers have studied and analyzed. In Ashutosh Jain's article, he lists some interpretations of dreams that most people have experienced throughout their life. He states that by being chased in a dream is symbolic of avoidance, whereas falling in a dream can signify anxiety and lack of control. In addition, dreams of not being able to run no matter how hard you try are emblematic of a low self-esteem and a general lack of confidence. 
Finally, Jane discusses dreams of flying. These dreams can be exciting to experience or even quite scary. They can either represent freedom and independence or indicate a deeper desire to escape from something. In conclusion, dreams play an important role in all of our lives, whether we have realized it or not. Today we discuss the history of dreaming, the psychological reasons behind it as well as the process, and some of the different ways we can interpret them. After listening to my speech, and hopefully not falling asleep, I hope you have gained a better knowledge of the complex world of dreams. So whether you have an amazing dream or a nightmare, remember that your brain could be trying to tell you something about your life.